So I found Zeke's backstory rather interesting, and more importantly, his actual overall goal really puts in perspective the end game for Attack on Titan, the whole final arc. It goes really well with creating theories and speculations, etc, etc. The idea that it's somewhat possible to actually manipulate Titan reproduction and make it so Titan users cannot reproduce, obviously have children, is actually a very, very big thing. Not only that, if we can manipulate Titan users like that so they cannot have children, how much further could Titan manipulation get if one was in contact with the founding Titan ability? So obviously at the moment, Eren Yeager has a majority of them. He does have the founding Titan, which basically in some way, shape or form, he does have access to these abilities, but not as direct as someone else. Uh, the whole conjecture is you need royal blood from a Titan to actually activate and use these set abilities. I believe the human variation of royal blood uh, makes you see visions and basically the past and uh, the mindset of the previous inheritors, but doesn't actually allow you to use the Founding Titan abilities. Eren may be a completely different situation. Uh, at the moment, we're actually slowly converting over completely different ideas, and it seems like Zeke being of royal blood and a Titan user ultimately makes him eligible to be able to use the Founding Titan Titan abilities if he were to obtain it. This leaves down two different paths. One, Zeke somehow gets the founding Titan from Eren Jaeger by obviously killing him and eating him, or vice versa. Eren obtains our royal blood and the Titan aspect from Zeke, and somehow that works in process with allowing him to access the full range of the Founder Titan's abilities. Obviously, there's a little bit of stipulation there. I'm not too sure of the semantics for it and how deep it could truly go, but that's kind of what it's shaping up to be so far. When you take this into consideration, what does it actually mean in terms of the quote unquote end game for Attack on Titan? Well, it takes in a lot of of different things. I made a quite a handful of videos talking about Attack on Titan and I've read a lot of comments of people speculating on how this war between two different races is going to end. A lot of people, including myself, can't really put our finger on it. How do you stop a massive race war that has been going on for so many years with one side having these massive powerhouses of Titans that can be used and manipulated as massive weapons to ultimately destroy the world if landed into the wrong hands? And how are the opposing forces going to reciprocate that? How are they going to take and let this Eldian race have all this power at their disposal? When you wrap in the Titan aspect for it, and when you kind of read through the story, you would never imagine that somehow, shape, or form that getting rid of the Titan curse and the ability to shapeshift and everything regarding Titans could actually be erased entirely. And that's kind of the prospect of what's happening right now. Making Titan users sterile so they can not reproduce, so the Titan curse cannot actually continue forward, right? But I'm sure you could even go above and beyond that and actually put in limitations to stop it from spreading to any, absolutely anyone. Maybe even eradicating the curse or the ability to turn into a Titan altogether. Now, that would take a lot more fundamental um, processing in terms of actually relaying that into the story, if that was even possible. There's a lot of semantics, I imagine, that would take place in terms of uh, genetics and how that would actually work with the quote-unquote Titan manipulation, it all kind of falls into the same gesture. We're going into the finale of the story with the idea that Titans, by the end of the story, are not going to be able to continue living, right? Titans will no longer be a legitimate thing. Funny enough, I think we're 100% going to get some sort of variation of that, where Titans are completely eradicated from the world, or at least not able to progress any further than, you know, a certain point. This also correlates with the final chapter chapter that has been kind of floating around for quite a bit of time now. It was revealed uh, a couple of months back what the legitimate last page of the final chapter looked like, and it was a very ominous character holding a newborn child with the word saying, we are finally free. Now, if you kind of take in everything I just said, erasing the Titan curse and living a normal, healthy 
lifestyle without any pressure of dying of in 13 years, without people breathing down your neck and trying to use you as a military weapon or an opposing a race or country uh, trying to completely obliterate you because of your history and because of your bloodline. We Are Free is sounding really, really good right now. Being free of all of that uh, burden and history to ultimately start to live a new lifestyle. It's rather bittersweet in a lot of different ways. Uh, I think there's a lot of loopholes and a lot of open questions, obviously, that hopefully get some explanation sooner or later. For me, it's definitely going down that direction. I think the biggest thing right now for me is Aaron Yeager being the person to kind of sacrifice everything potentially to make this happen. It may not potentially be his plan right now, but I heavily believe sooner or later he's going to eat Zeke and he's going to somehow obtain the Titan Royal Blood that is kind of a little bit of a technicality just there, obviously obtaining Zeke. He also obviously gets the Beast Titan, but somehow, some way, being able to use the Founding Titan ability to obviously rewrite Titan history, basically. I think Eren's purpose for that is a really, really big thing. However, I don't think it's going to be that simple. I think a lot of things are going to come into consideration, at least regarding Aaron Yeager and how he mentally feels about this whole ordeal. He may want to rewrite something else entirely, and that kind of depends on how you think about Aaron right now, what his mentality state is like. Is he diving off the deep end a little bit too much, or is he kind of keeping everything under wraps to hold a very strong and unapproachable composure? What I mean by this, maybe the biggest flaw in the plan right now is actually Aaron himself. And that, like I said, goes completely off the idea that potentially because of all the Titan users and the memories that he is currently inheriting and the emotions, this is going to affect Aaron heavily. And we've already seen the massive changes for it. His contrast of character has changed completely. His care of life, his care of his friends, everything like that has completely changed. The way he speaks, the way he approaches people is completely different. Now, a lot of people may say that that's him putting on a facade, you know, that's him hiding everything away so he kind of goes under the radar and undetected etc etc so he could take all the problems himself and deal with it himself but I don't necessarily think it's that simple if you were to explain the plan of actually trying to get rid of Titans the idea of it is actually a pretty big thing it's, it's actually pretty good now a lot of people would obviously see that differently in terms of what perspective they come from whether it be a royal family or a military powerhouse or a different country or race of people etc etc but I think the idea of getting rid of Titans from a kind of human perspective would be a nice thing. Taking out the biggest issue that has been plaguing the Eldian race as a curse, only allowing them to live for 13 years, completely uh, get rid of the prospect of turning innocent humans into mindless zombie titans, basically, and move forward into the you know new world, basically. I think a lot of people would come to understand that. The biggest problem is that if Eren takes this idea and his memories and his emotions are completely warped and manipulated to the point where he doesn't actually see it as a technically a good thing. Or maybe the way he goes about it is a little bit far beyond of being normal, quote unquote. And let's just say he's far from that point at the moment. For the most part, I do kind of stand with the idea that if Eren is somehow going to be the, the person that saves the human race and ultimately gets rid of the Titan curse, it's not going to be that simple. I think his mind will definitely come into play as it slowly fractures over time and he becomes a lot more uncontrollable but uh, being a massive threat to the world right now. He holds a tremendous amount of power and anything and everything can kind of insert itself into Eren's mind and warp and manipulate him into a very dark and downward spiral. The only people that could evidently stop him are other Titan users. Let's be real, if it does come to that there's going to be some very very emotional fights, there's going to be some very crazy goodbyes and I think kind of building up to that is a very very good end game right you have the cause you have the plan you have the idea to save humanity to save the human race to get rid of the Titan curse uh, completely you know rewriting history basically and changing how Titans work to push into a future without Titans right which is a pretty good thing but it's ultimately in 
in the hands of someone that is completely out of control. And the only way that you could get through to this person is bringing them completely down in terms of destroying them to all ends meet, almost to death, and hopefully trying to get into their psyche and being like, look, this needs to happen. You are the only person that can actually do this unless someone else steps in to kind of potentially sacrifice himself or take all of Aaron's burden away from him and do it themselves. If for me, it sounds like a really beautiful contrast of confliction, which I think could be explored tremendously well. The ideas that I'm sure Isayama has at the moment is probably incredible, and the fact that he's definitely shaped this in with Zeke's backstory is a really good kickoff point with where the ending of the story is currently going. I'm very excited to see how this wraps in with Aaron Yeager, how this conflicts with his mentality, if Zeke and Levi and everyone else are even going to live by the end of it, but just with the final panel of the story that we've already seen, boiling down to some way, shape, or form, Titans will not exist by the end of the story, that they will completely be eradicated, and those characters will enter a new world without these powerhouses of Titans roaming around. So with that being said, that is basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you've read the most recent chapter, which was actually at the beginning of this month, um, let me know what you think. Where do you think uh, Attack on Titans Endgame is currently going? Because obviously there's a lot of different ideas and this is only just a small portion of one of them. So, uh, but with that being said, uh, I'm actually going to end the video off here and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.